Well, now on one of our top stories, Google is strengthening its investments in Singapore with a third data center while embarking on efforts to boost local AI capabilities and online safety. And for more, we're joined by Ben King. He is a managing director of Google Singapore. Thanks for joining us, Ben. Uh, what kinds of programs can we expect as Google commits to equipping more people here uh, with skills for the future? Yeah, look, first of all, thanks for having me. You know, we spend a, a lot of time uh, trying to understand the current needs uh, across the labour market. On the, and on the back of this work, you know, there's two broad areas that we're focusing a lot of our skilling activities around, and that's digital marketing and also uh, cloud computing. Just to give a bit more context, uh, regarding digital marketing, Skills Future, they've suggested that, you know, while the demand for traditional marketing jobs, it's still prevalent. Uh, there's increasing need for professionals uh, to possess digital marketing and also data related skills. And on the cloud computing side, we see numbers indicating that by this year alone, close to 30 percent of all new job opportunities globally uh, will be in data, AI, engineering and cloud computing. So we want to be helpful in those spaces. But we work closely in consultation with the government and we identify, uh, you know, renewed areas of focus as we move forward. So we'll double down on these areas for now and we'll evolve as we move forward uh, based on need. And one of the areas is also AI capabilities. Uh, how does Google plan to balance the development of AI solutions in, in say, key, key sectors like finance, sustainability, healthcare, you know, with safeguarding privacy data? Well, look, it's a great question. Uh, we've been really happy to announce an MOU with uh, Singapore's Smart Nation and Digital Government Group uh, today, and that will strengthen AI cooperation in Singapore. Uh, and it really outlines three areas of collaboration, applied research and development as one across the sectors that you mentioned in finance, sustainability and healthcare. Uh, the second is around competent competency and capability to development to, to really develop uh, AI skill sets across the public sector. And then finally, uh, a collaboration around AI governance and ethics. But to come back to your question uh, on data privacy, uh, you know, look, it's our responsibility to safeguard user and data privacy in all of our products and service offerings. Uh, we'll incorporate Google's AI principles in the development process of all AI solutions. And what that means to us is, first of all, implementing a clear and transparent user consent process. Uh, second, you know, providing users with transparency and control over the use of their data. And then finally, just ensuring that these solutions, they're built and tested for safety before they're rolled out. Yeah, and building on, you know, the issue of safety, we, we know that one key effort of the company uh, is online safety for the vulnerable, especially children. Uh, what about other vulnerable groups, say, you know, the elderly or those who are less tech literate? Well, yeah, thanks for asking the question. It's incredibly important that we think about the entire ecosystem. In fact, we believe that a successful digital economy is one that's based on, uh, you know, everyone feeling safe, uh, especially for the most, most vulnerable uh, segments of the community. And, and we talked a lot about children in our announcement today, but you make a very good point uh, about the elderly. Uh, according to IMDA, you know, the percentage of people that are aged 75 and above that are using smartphones, it's risen rapidly. Uh, in 2019, the number was 41%. By 2020, it had risen to over 60%. So we do need to think about uh, these people very, very carefully. And, you know, we build tools which are secured by default and private by design, but we need to also empower them with the knowledge on how to use these tools and products effectively. Uh, so we spent a bit of time trying to understand uh, particularly what the elderly population are concerned most about in Singapore. Uh, digital finances is one of the key concerns. And so we've really doubled down there to start. You know, since the beginning of this year, we've worked closely with RSVP Singapore and also grassroots organisations in Jurong Spring to, to guide our elderly, uh, you know, step by step on the safe usage of online payments. That includes uh, payment platforms like Google Play. Now, it takes patience, uh, you know, and we're grateful uh, with, uh, to our partners in, in helping us engaged 700 seniors so far, but that's really just the work beginning. You know, we'll continue to expand the outreach and we'll touch on other topics around good cyber hygiene practices so they can, uh, you know, navigate the online world in a safe way and enjoy an experience like uh, that is commensurate uh, with the rest of the population. Well, Ben, also, um, how does the company's first sustainability grant for Singapore uh, fit into Google's wider sustainability plans? Look, sustainability has been a, a priority for us at Google for a very long time. And our efforts, they really focus on three key areas. First of all, you know, operating responsibly as a company through our offices and our data centres. And we have a moonshot target of running all our operations 24-7 carbon free uh, by 2030. 
Uh, but secondly, we want to also help everyone to make more sustainable choices in their day-to-day -day lives through our products. Uh, and that can uh, include things like eco-friendly flight routes or cycling routes on, on Google Maps in Singapore. You know, it's been an extremely popular feature, actually, uh, and we launched it during the pandemic. But finally, we want to support companies, cities, and also non-profits uh, to meet their sustainability goals and efforts. And that really leads me uh, to the announcement that we made today. Uh, we're incredibly proud to support Mandai Nature uh, with a $1 million grant through Google.org, uh, which is our philanthropic arm. Uh, this will help to progress their work uh, with eight recognised nonprofits from around the region to form a coalition uh, to identify nature-based solutions in Southeast Asia, and that work's incredibly important. Uh, you know, research suggests that nature-based solutions could contribute uh, up to 30% of the climate mitigation needed by 2050. Uh, so we're really excited uh, about that grant that we've made, and, and we're likewise excited to see what uh, Mandai Nature does with it. All right, many thanks for speaking with us. That was Ben King, the Managing Director at Google Singapore.